see what judge just took away from California. We've gotten so used to liberal judges hindering the executive order of Donald Trump and also conservative legislation, that we're stunned when one standard predictable with our Constitution. There are conservative judges out there who adore the first purpose of the creators of our Constitution and its Bill of Rights. What's more, with President Trump in the White House, there are probably going to be significantly later on as he makes legal arrangements amid his residency. California may be overpowering be a liberal state, yet elected judges are not named by the states, and are not liable to state governments. They are a piece of the government courts, so when they make a decision that the state's leaders don't care for, there's nothing they can do other than making their voices listened, or, contingent upon the conditions take an interest in an interest of the choice. Steady with its liberal predisposition, the territory of California is firmly restricted to Second Amendment rights. Subsequently, the administrators effectively seek after enactment to encroach on those rights as ensured by the Constitution. In any case, a government judge just issued an order keeping the implementation of a California law that would encroach on the privilege of the natives to keep and remain battle-ready. A federal judge granted a preliminary injunction Thursday preventing California from enforcing its gun magazine confiscation law. U.S. District Judge Roger T. Benitez said that the law, which prohibits possession of a magazine with a capacity exceeding 10 rounds of ammunition, is likely to violate the Second Amendment rights of the plaintiffs in the suit. As a result, he ordered the state to immediately cease enforcing the law, pending further legal developments. The court does not lightly enforce a state statute, even on a preliminary basis, Benitez said in the ruling. However, just as the court is mindful that a majority of California voters approved Proposition 63 and that the government has a legitimate interest in protecting the public from gun violence, it is equally mindful that the Constitution is a shield against tyranny of a majority. That announcement by the court should be put on boards around this nation. A larger part of California residents is not engaged to abbreviate the opportunities of different Californians that are ensured to them by our U.S. Constitution. The federal judge continued, if this injunction does not issue, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of otherwise law-abiding citizens will have a untenable choice, become an outlaw or dispossess one's own lawfully acquired property, he wrote in the ruling. That's a choice they should not have to make. Not on this record. Not surprisingly, California's Attorney General is not happy. Proposition 63 was overwhelmingly approved by voters to increase public safety and enhance security in a sensible and constitutional way, Becerra said in a statement on the ruling. I will defend the will of the California voters because we cannot continue to lose the innocent lives due to gun violence. There's a great deal that could be said in regards to the lawyer general's announcement, however one call attention to out, if he is so worried about losing honest lives in California, maybe as opposed to condensing the privileges of the subjects to safeguard themselves, he should execute a forceful program of coordinating with government immigration and customs enforcement authorities to free the condition of illicit settlers. All things considered. He did say he was worried in regards to the welfare of blameless Californians, isn't that right? What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HT The Daily Caller Michelle Obama terrified after damning footage goes viral, see it before it's deleted. Michelle Obama what a racist puss. She hates you, me, America, hell, anything that has to do with Western civilization. And she's an idiot to boot. The sooner she and her scum disease husband are gone, the better. World News Politics posted about Muchel's latest anti-American tirade, or perhaps we should say stupidity. Um. Did Michelle really just say that the Founding Fathers who signed the Declaration of Independence were not born in America? Thomas Jefferson, who wrote up the Declaration of Independence and signed it, was born in Virginia. Benjamin Franklin was born in Pennsylvania, 
and John Adams was born in Massachusetts. In fact, only eight of the 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence were not born in this country. As a Harvard graduate, one would think Michelle would know this, but she clearly had no idea. WikiLeaks Julian Assange releases video America needs to see. Trump was right. Leader of WikiLeaks Julian Assange is sharing some facts about Hillary Clinton once again. Clearly we already know Hillary is corrupt, but this may take the cake. In the interview below Assange discusses how one email in all of Hillary's emails stand out above the rest. He shares that all serious analysts know, and even the U.S. government has agreed, that some Saudi figures have been supporting ISIS and funding ISIS, but the dodge has always been that it is some rogue princes using their oil money to do whatever they like, but actually the government disapproves. However this Hillary Clinton email says that it's not just a rogue prince, but the actual governments of Saudi Arabia and Qatar. When asked more details about the relations between Hillary and these governments Assange shares a startling discovery. These governments are funding the Clinton Foundation, buying arms from the US and funding ISIS and ISIL. He shares under Hillary Clinton, and the Clinton emails reveal a significant discussion of it, the biggest ever arms deal in the world was made with Saudi Arabia, more than $80 billion. During her tenure, the total arms exports from the US doubled in dollar value. She's even more wrapped up in criminal activities than we originally thought and using the US to arm the enemy. $555 trillion scandal erupts, President Trump is irate with the Fed. Amid the election, Donald Trump was a solid commentator of the Federal Reserve. He was particularly straightforward against its chair, Janet Yellen. It's plain to perceive any reason why. Amid Obama's years, our nation has not fared well. Compensations have not ascended for white collar class or average workers Americans since the 90s, yet the typical cost for basic items has. While Obama gloated about helping the economy, a large number of individuals left the work constraint or are presently subject to sustenance stamps or other government programs. The billions he squandered dumping American citizen dollars into government organizations have not floated our financial development or GDP. However by one means or another, even with all these awful outcomes, Janet Yellen keeps on making herself an enemy of the new organization. She's reasoning about making a hazardous move that many are deciphering as political. From Zero Hedge Janet Yellen continues to demonstrate that she is either profoundly ignorant or dishonest. Neither of those are positive qualities for a Fed chair. Having maintained interest rates at essentially zero for seven years during the Obama years, Yellen suddenly believes it would be unwise to wait too long to raise rates now. It's a bizarre claim particularly when you consider 1. The U.S. economy is limping along at best and entering a recession at worst. In 2016 GDP growth was a measly 1.9% and a the latest spate of data has all suggested a contraction is underway. 2. The Fed owns some $2.4 trillion treasuries, which would be negatively impacted by the Fed raising rates. 3. There are over $555 trillion in interest rate-based derivatives floating around, which similarly would be negatively impacted by raising rates. For the Fed to embark on an aggressive tightening cycle in the context of just one of these would be foolish, but when all three are in play. Either Janet Yellen is actively trying to sabotage the U.S. economy for whatever reason or she has no remote understanding of economics, or possibly both. Unraveling the complexities of the U.S. economy is no simple undertaking. It takes involvement and know-how to guarantee the soundness and development of our country. However, Yellen is by all accounts sailing in a fundamental comprehension of how our Federal Reserve ought to work, or is persistently attempting to harm it. Why? Maybe despite everything she has a socialist order from Obama. Maybe she is mad towards President Trump. Whichever way it's the ideal opportunity for a change at the Federal Reserve.
it's the ideal opportunity for fresh recruits to right that ship. The dismal thing is, we'll need to hold up until 2018. What do you think? Ought to President Trump hold up that long to make a move, or is there something he ought to do to keep America from conceivable catastrophe? HT Patriot Journal